been almost four months since Naima Walker became a councilwoman for the Hollywood Town Council. Today, I talk one-on-one -on -one with her to talk about what issues she's tackling right now for this edition of Quentin's Close-Ups. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel and like Quentin's Close-Ups on Facebook. Councilwoman Naima Walker, welcome back to Quentin's Close-Ups. Yes, sir. Good morning and thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. You know, the last time I interviewed you for Quentin's Close Ups was right before the primary in June. And obviously you were running at the time for Hollywood Town Council. And since that time, you've been elected. Well, let me ask you this, Councilwoman. From four months ago to right now, who is Councilwoman Naima Walker? Uh, Councilwoman Naima Walker is a regular person that wants to see the good in everything and everyone. I want to be a part of the solution not a participant in the problem. And I'm at a point in my life where I am able to help. I'm willing to help. And it's coming from the goodness of my heart. It's a sincere opportunity to really help serve um, at a greater capacity. And I've been blessed to be able to do so, um, so far as an elected official. And you talk about greater capacity. Obviously, you were the town administrator for the town of Hollywood for many, many years. And I went back on the website and saw a lot of your accomplishments. And oh. yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And, and I want to know this, too, as far as serving. What's new? What's now in the town of Hollywood? Um, so my initial introduction to Hollywood was back in 2013. I started working under Mayor Schuster's administration as the court treasurer. And um, several things have changed since then from uh, new mayors, new employees, new elected officials, um, new perspectives for um, our everyday activities, new outlook um, as it speaks to the next 12 months. Um, I've seen the change in the way in which council has performed. and. My whole reasoning, well, a great portion of my reasoning for running for council is that I wanted to contribute to that change, a good change. There's quite a few areas where um, well, it, we actually, town council just had a strategic retreat right. Saturday past by Zoom. And um, there are some committees that have been identified and um, there were some things that each committee is uh, looking to provide for the town. There are some areas where they want to partner with the community, with ourselves, and really put together a plan to address certain measures. And I love that approach to being a part of the solution and not the problem. But um, there's still some things that kind of remain the same. Um, as from 2013 forward, there's different um, ways in which folks are leading the charge, if you will, um, from the administrative perspective of the town. And as, as I stated before and always say, I do not have all the answers for everything by far. Um, but I think outside of the box, I challenge myself to be better. I challenge myself to explore other options. I challenge myself to put myself in an environment where it's contagious to do more. It's contagious to be better. Um, that stagnant mindset um, makes things seem like the deja vu. Um, and there's a little bit of that um, occurring. And I, my hope is that things will move in another direction sooner than later. So there's been a lot of change, but some things remain the same. And what is your perspective right now in the town of Hollywood? I know that's a redundant question there. <laughs> no, that, no, that's good. Um, so I think that um, you have some excited elected officials who want to work. Um, you have some folks who are accustomed to doing things the way that they've always done, which doesn't require a whole lot of work. Um, and so there's an imbalance there. Um, but I'm, I'm hopeful that people will eventually just just do more, just do more, communicate better, um, which is one reason why I started what I, what I called um, a community chat. I chose to select the last Friday in every month for 30 minutes, starting at 6 p.m. I wanted to 
sit with a local business, chat with them for a few, kind of get information from them. Who are they? Where are they from? Are they locals? How long have they been in business? What are their services and goods? Um, highlight them. At the same time, share with the community anything that's on the calendar for the town, any events coming up, any opportunities to get registered to vote like they're doing this morning at the library. Um, just really be that medium for improved, enhanced communication. So. You talk about the community, and obviously because of COVID, you can't have the community chat right now in person. Mm -hmm. But let me ask you, speaking of COVID, I know, obviously, like, as I just mentioned, it's still here. Are any of the town's parks open to the public to exercise or play in or for people to just be able to get their mind cleared? Yes. Yeah, so I called and uh, confirmed that, in fact, all of the town parks have reopened. Mm -hmm. um, that would include the Hollywood Manor Park, the Pineland Park, and the Wide Awake Park. Yes. They have all reopened. Um, to the public, as well as they're available for rentals. I'm not certain if the hours of availability are the same as what they were pre-COVID. I believe they've changed a little bit. I think it's more around the, the working hours of 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. So the parks may be open at 8.30 a.m. and shut down about 4.30 p.m. I may be wrong, but what I understand, that is the new availability to the public at the, at the parks to the parks and speaking of availability let's talk about the town and let's talk about the american rescue plan act how much of those recovery funds have been used to fund lost revenue in the town of hollywood i don't believe any of those dollars have been received by the town either by an upfront um, appropriation or reimbursement um and actually i'm not even certain what the expenses have been um that we would qualify for reimbursement towards or what the needs are that we would qualify for um, in terms of the financial leverage. Mm -hmm. um, I've asked in, that was the month of July, yet uh, very first council meeting in the month of July, I asked for a uh, profit and loss statement just to see where we are. Um, and I thought that it would be very helpful if council could receive that information on a monthly basis going forward. I think it helps eliminate the need to prolong an open forum asking questions about every line item um, and the bank reconciliation, which we do receive that every month. It's a bank reconciliation done in Excel um, versus the report being done in our financial software. But needless to say, it doesn't provide enough information for council to really do their job. And what I mean by that is we have the responsibility to oversee the town's budget that's approved and ensure that we are not overspending ridiculously, that we have justifications for our expenses, and also to make sure that funds are coming in as we assumed they would so that we can carry out whatever our priorities are. Um, I have not given, I have not been given um, access to that financial information. Um, if town council has received it, I'm the only one who didn't get it. Um, I am the only one that asked for it in July, um, and this is now September 30th. So I've been waiting just to kind of see how long is it going to take for council to receive what it's in fact due, um, a simple profit and loss statement. And it's not anything that I'm asking for that's um, excessive of what we should be entitled to. Um, in fact, there's state and municipal law that supports the request for and the provision of that type of information. So I'm not sure what has been spended that we're due reimbursement for in that um, particular realm of finances. And so it, and it, it's kind of sad that that's my answer to your question. Um, a town of our size you would think that we could communicate a little better with one another so that folks can make an intelligent statement or an intelligent answer to a simple question such as what you asked. Um, but I'm hopeful in the near future, communication will improve and folks just do what they're supposed to do. Just do what you're supposed to do. So, Okay, let me ask you this, Councilwoman. What is the town's current operating budget? It's $4 million plus dollars, And that includes our general fund, there are allocations for housing, parts, um, grants, and then we have a proprietary fund, which right now is not self-supporting. So it's $4 million plus collectively. And let me ask you this hypothetically. 
if okay. and when you all do receive those recovery funds, will taxes then in Hollywood decrease after receiving those funds? I would say that is left up to Charleston County as Charleston mm. County oversees the whole tax base, um, the assessments, the appraisals, the tax roll, uh, the fund collection. All of that is managed through Charleston County. The town of Hollywood does not receive one penny in tax revenue. So all of that is managed, received, billed, everything through Charleston County. Yeah, so I'm certain if Charleston County has any plans to adjust, um, nor do I believe that they legally can uh, tinker with, if you will, the tax base to offset any revenues through that particular program. And what is the current tra tax base in Hollywood? I do not know what the tax base is. Um, I've not followed that closely, given Hollywood doesn't have a huge role in the management and oversight of the tax base. Um, nor do we receive any dollars from it. Um, folks believe that, you know, they're, they're taxpayers and I'm, I, I'm a resident of the town of Hollywood and, and, and the town needs to do what I think is best because I'm, I'm a taxpayer, but yes, I'm a taxpayer as well, but those dollars go to Charleston County. They don't funnel back through to the town of Hollywood. Unfortunately, um, that's the way that our structure is designed. And speaking of structure, it, you know, the big topic in the town right now is about wastewater and sewer. Is there an independent company that's helping the town with its sewer? So we have the town hired a contractor that is responsible for the operation and maintenance of the wastewater system. And I believe they were hired back in 2000. 20, maybe early 2020, if I'm not mistaken. So I believe they've been um, the town's contractor for over a year now. And um, from what I understand, they're doing a pretty good job um, as to what they were hired to do. And okay. Can the town eventually afford to ask the Charleston Water System to join in with as far as helping with the sewer? Can we afford to do that? I think we can afford to ask for help every day. Um, but the um, realistic um, perspective in that question is that that's something that the town in Charleston County would have to come to um, an understanding of and enter into an agreement mm. in order to move forward with. And I have not heard, well, it's only been since July um, that I've been an elected official. I have not heard. Um, of that meeting being scheduled. So I'm not sure if that's something on the horizon, um, if it will ever happen, I have no clue, but I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see which direction we go in. You know, you have a, a, a board of seven folks, the mayor, six council people, um, the mayor has administrative plus legislative responsibility, the other six council folks, we all have the legislative responsibility. So that collective um, group in our form of government, um, we, we need to at least make an agreement to move one way or the other. Um, and that has not been presented yet. So I, I'm excited to see if it's ever presented. Um, and if it is, which way we'll go with it. And speaking of which, you talk about the horizon, you talk about direction. Let me go back to the retreat. Obviously, I know the town has a shared vision on its plate right now. What are the consensus goals and strategies that would actually meet that vision? That's a great question. Um, and I say that because during the retreat, I was taking lots of notes. I listened a lot. Um, I tried not to interrupt and I wanted to really hear where folks were coming from. Um, some of the goals and um, plans presented by the different committees um, were just that. They were presentations from a committee. Mm. And of course, at the retreat, you're unable to make any decisions on anything. It's more just a relaxed setting, just real conversation. And there wasn't a whole lot of, the, the goal is to do this, let's set a timeline to that. Are we looking for action in 90 days? Mm. Are we looking for implementation in six months? 
We're going to regroup and evaluate nine months. None of that took place. It was more discussion. Mm. Talk, talk, talk. <laughs> Which was good to hear people speak. But um, th- I think that folks have their individual agendas. And there are certain things that people would love to see happen. Um, and then there are other areas where folks just don't seem to um, be engaged at all. So I, I really don't know if that shared vision is honestly a shared vision. How could the residents have trust in the town of Hollywood? That is a great question. I am um, wanting to help glue um, the connection between the residents and the town. Um, Going back to what I was trying to do with that community chat, I was trying to bring to the residents the information that they say they don't receive Mm. because they're working when we're working and they don't have time to check um, the internet. Um, They don't have internet access at home, so they can't get online and see the agenda. They can't um, attend meetings because of other obligations. There's always an obstacle in um, some of the discussion that I hear from people feeling as if, well, I don't know what's going on at town hall and nobody comes to us. And so I thought that maybe doing a community chat, being on live on uh, Facebook, um, which I understand even some of my children are not even on Facebook. So I understand that Facebook is not the best solution, um, but I'm trying what I can, what I think will help kind of um, delineate some of that um, negative uh, perspective people have on the town. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that with time, um, folks will start to be more active and they will start to ask more questions and they will start to attend more and they will challenge us to be better. Um, not so much to point fingers, but really challenge us to think outside of the box. What are we doing that we can improve? Um, And then, you know, at the same time, if there's something we're doing great, celebrate it with us. Let us know you guys are doing a great job. Like I hear the mayor say often that town hall staff is impeccable. They do everything above and beyond at the drop of a dime. And that's awesome. That's awesome to hear. Um, So, yeah, I'm hopeful that with time things will change and that the residents will grow a greater sense of trust in those that they elected to serve for them. Um, Otherwise, why were we elected? Somebody has to trust somebody somewhere out there. I don't know if it's just because you got this long lineage of family and they're all voting for you because we're related or folks are doing it based on merit. I, I bet I can't answer, <laughs> but I'm hopeful that the um, communication will get better and that the trust will be reinforced. And councilwoman, let me ask you, will the town consider a hybrid planning process to help with the shared vision? Hmm. I think that that retreat is what is probably going to be the closest thing to a hybrid planning. Mm. Um, I think that that retreat was supposed to serve as um, that particular type of median. I I don't foresee anything else coming um, down the line um, unless questions are asked and, and folks just want to do different than what's been done in the past. And, you know, I I was thinking a lot about when you're talking about housing and obviously, you know, what's going on right now in the town of of Hollywood. How many town properties does the town want to leverage at this particular juncture? That also has not been a conversation. Um, Properties being leveraged for um, the greater good of the community. Um, the only thing that I know is that we have a park, the, the SAP, they call it the Trails at the SAP Park that has been underutilized and for various reasons given to council, it's been underutilized. And I'm not sure if the verification of certain things are being done. Um, you know, that old saying, trust but verify. I'm not sure if a lot of that is happening. Um, I have a feeling it's not. Um, but I believe that that part was being, um, we were looking, the town was seeking grant funds to help prepare and improve that particular property for public use. Mm-hmm. And some of the purposes, as I understand, 
um, we're not outright allowed to do as we desire as a council with that property. There's some um, requests we have to put in and approvals we have to seek so that we can prepare that particular property to be used by the public. Um, that is the only property that um, has been discussed as recent as, recent as our retreat, uh, where the town is looking to do something with for the greater good of the community. Well, and speaking of which, what recreational opportunities in the town should be diversified so that everyone can enjoy it? That's a good question. Um, it has been asked by um, some council about uh, installing community parks and other communities outside of those that we currently own and operate. Um, however, I've also uh, utilized the R.D. Schroeder Community Complex, which connects to um, C.C. Blaney. Those two schools are no longer in operation. However, they're owned by Charleston County um, Parks and Rec. And Charleston County Parks and Rec has various programs available. Um, soccer, I think they're looking at kickboxing, basketball. There's a weight room. Um, tons and tons of activities. They have their own staff, their own budget, their own schedule. Um, but it's available, of course, to the public. And with us being um, the town where these properties are located, we have, of course, immediate access as long as you have transportation um, and the funds necessary for membership and such to utilize that site for those recreational services. But the town does not have um, a recreational uh, committee or department that really uh, operates programs, if you will. Um, I think the town try to do that kind of thing, even as loosely as um, being an approved site for like the free lunch program several years ago. So they'd come to one of the parks and, and pick up their lunch. Uh, we had summer camp programs, maybe a week at a time, two weeks at a time at one of our parks. Um, those recreational type activities used to take place, but that was um, an administration in several years ago. Okay. Speaking of sites, Councilwoman, let me ask you, uh, has the town ever thought, because <laughs> obviously you see it around everywhere, downtown Charleston, Mount Pleasant, West Ashley, do they mm -hmm. want to have their own farmer's market? I have had several business owners ask about whether or not that's something the town can pull off. And I think that we probably could pull that off if we really made it a priority and establish a goal for it and develop what are our objectives and how do we accomplish this? What's the timeline attached to it? Um, I think that would be awesome to add that to the culture of the town. Um, it, it could be a serious possibility. Wow. And, and you talk about the culture of the town. Where in the town does the, the town government want to expand street amenities? So are you speaking about like public lighting? Oh, yes. Uh, all of that. Yes, ma'am. Oh, yeah. So the expansion of that, I have not seen that on the agenda to expand. What I have seen is the improvement of some existing um, infrastructure with regards to the, the street lighting. I believe that they are upgrading some of the fixtures on light poles mm. to improve um, the lighting in those communities and then also have more. Um, stable equipment attached to those poles. So they'll live a little longer, perform much better. Um, that, that is the most that I've seen and, and heard so far as, as relates to some of our amenities. And, and with the growth of the town obviously happening as we speak, where are the opportunities for jobs, leisure, and tourism? Mm, great question. Um, I know that the residential boom is here if you will there are several um developments um unraveling and um perhaps locals have found an opportunity to seek employment with those contractors uh, masonry electricians uh plumbers right pardon me i'm getting a call apologize for that. no worries be it as it may, in those industries, hopefully locals have been able to secure some sort of employment, even if it's just temporary through those ventures. I have not seen or heard about any other businesses that have approached the town, that have come in to meet with the mayor, to 
to chat about what they'd like to bring and if it's possible and how we can make this work. Um, I'm not certain that businesses are out there uh, really looking for. Um, I did ask a question in that regard um, at the retreat and um, whether or not the businesses is something that we needed to kind of plan for um, as it relates to, you know, some of our infrastructure. And I was told that the, the business sector has pretty much been um, at capacity for a while and that um, they didn't foresee that being something that we needed to make a necessary priority for right now. However, um, I think that as time moves forward, we'll see that we may need to take another look at that and um, do something different. Okay. Would you all be in favor of creating some sort of business? <laughs> I hate the access, but business preservation alliance. Hmm. So I know that there's the St. Paul's Chamber of Commerce. They exist. Okay. And then there's also another one that's Southeastern Chamber of Commerce. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Okay. Um, those two entities are active in uh, the community and to the point where they have highlighted some of the ribbon cutting for new businesses. I actually attended the ribbon cutting for the new Italian restaurant here in Hollywood. I think the day after the election, if I'm not mistaken, um, but it was a few months ago. And so that was put on by the St. Paul's Chamber of Commerce conjunction with the Southeastern Chamber of Commerce. And um, so I think that those two entities should be able to capture and provide the services that that sort of alliance would. And as I stated, they're active entities. They're not any um, dinosaur aged groups. They're, they're, they're current and um, very active. So I'm hopeful that people will participate and learn from them um, and also help them be able to expand their services to the particular businesses that are members. And I know this might be a tough question, Councilwoman, but it, would you all be able to create some sort of business revenue for the town of Hollywood? A new business revenue, I should say? A new business revenue? The only revenue we have as it relates to businesses is the business license tax that we impose. But another stream of revenue... The only thing that I know we have is with the newsletter, I believe businesses can purchase an ad um, at various sizes for various costs in the newsletter. That's a stream of revenue, if you will, if it ties to businesses. But I don't believe there's any funding that we can seek that we can then turn over to the business community in the town to help them with their needs. Um, yeah, I don't, I can't recall any agency or entity that we could tap into to seek those dollars to immediately throw back into the business sector outside of us developing a plan within our own general fund to do something independently. And what are their needs right now? I mean, COVID's like I said, still going on. What exactly are their needs? From the businesses that I've spoken to, everyone seems to well, everyone always needs money. Money is never um, something that you ever could run out of. So let me first say that. But um, a lot of the businesses, they have very positive um, perspectives. They're optimistic. Um, they are doing okay. Um, they're still opening based on their schedules. They still have clients. They've even gotten a few new people that are just traveling through, or they may be a part of the working crews with some of the construction going on. Um, so they seem to be in um, a plateau, but it's it's not anything where they're afraid um, that they can't make payroll before the quarter is out. Um, that's what I've gotten from those that I've spoken to. Everyone seems to be very positive that things will get better and it's going to be sooner than later. So I encourage them to keep that spirit. Certainly. And you talk a lot about, obviously, the construction there in the town. How do you preserve the natural environment there? Preservation of the natural environment, I think, is absolutely important um, for the entire town and surrounding communities as well. Um, the residential boom that we're experiencing, these developments have been approved um, for, for several, several years 
now and, and for whatever reasons things are just popping off as you will today right. um so i'm not sure if we are able to revisit those developments and say hey we know that you guys are breaking ground now however we'd like you to change this we'd like you to cut back on that i think that those types of dis discussions and decisions have had have been made prior to them being given the final approval from town council to even exist um in our town so i don't think we can backtrack and cut anything off um today but i think that we can be good neighbors and just communicate with those folks any complaints we're receiving um perhaps they can uh, adjust something modify one thing if it's something that's just causing a great uphaul of complaints and just confusion in a community yeah. and I, 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 this might be a complicated question here too but is the yeah. town uh pursuing any vulnerable infrastructure we pursuing what again? Say it one more yeah. time. Pursuing fundable infrastructure. Fundable. Oh, fundable, fundable. Yeah, to prevent. Yes, ma'am. Um. No, we're we're not pursuing. Um, no, we're not. Um, that I'm aware of. Um, and again, I don't I don't get the information that I ask for on on other basis. So there could in fact be conversations about things that haven't gotten to council yet. Mm. Um, I know that there's a, a working process with everything. So perhaps things just haven't come to us yet, but no, not that I am aware of. We're not pursuing um, infrastructure. The only thing we're pursuing is to continue to operate and maintain our existing infrastructure um, and enhance that as we can or improve that as we can, I should say. Not necessarily enhance it, but improvements are absolutely necessary. Um, that would be the only infrastructure that I know of that we are pursuing anything for. And does the mayor actually have a plan to, you know, mitigate or stop flooding? I think that the plan to mitigate flooding is something that the town is held by DHEC to do as um, I've just received clarification on that we are still under from 2018, a DHEC consent order. Um, and we're just waiting for their final steps to release us um, from that order. Um, I think that the contractor that the town has to operate and maintain our wastewater system, as I stated before, is doing what they're supposed to do and they're doing a good job at it. Okay. And so I believe that that will help alleviate any flooding issues so i believe that that may be the plan um if you're asking about a plan from the town to address that um and we're working with infrastructure that's been in the earth for a very long time yes. and um things erode above ground as well as under and so sometimes you don't know what you can't see and i think that we're absolutely going to work swiftly to address anything that occurs but um i believe that that's the plan keep this contractor in place who is doing good for us and um address any issues that arise expeditiously and um keep ourselves in a good place of grace with those who can you know assess a penalty or fine to us for whatever reason so i think that that is our plan and how much is the town paying for this con paying this contract, I should say. Ooh, it's a six-figure contract. Um, I believe it was renewed maybe in March and or April of this year okay. for another three-year term. Um, don't quote me on those numbers, sure, but I believe sure. it was just renewed for a three-year term. So apparently the first year went great um, to renew a contract and to extend it for a few years. But it, it is a six-figure contract. Yes, ma'am. And obviously you... Yes, ma'am. And you got on council, obviously, in July. What other issues do you want to tackle, you know, in the next couple of months? Um, looking at the retreat um, items, the discussion that took place, I'm, I'm looking to see council take action on some of the discussion we had. Um, I'm looking to participate. I'm looking to um, help suggest whatever I can. I'm looking to actively fulfill whatever role is needed that I can possibly physically handle. 
um, to be a part of the solution. And I want to stay away from the problems. Councilwoman Naomi Walker, thank you so much for your time. And again, thank welcome you. back to Quentin's Close Steps. Yes, there's a pleasure. I appreciate the invitation. Thank you so much, Quentin. You have a great day. You're welcome. Hope to have you back on soon. Yes, yes, yes.